Hey guys, hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to show you five things I think can help your acoustic guitar playing. Now, these aren't the only five things to work on, obviously, but if you get them in your practice routine, hopefully they'll help you get closer to your guitar playing goals. Now, the first thing we're going to deal with is relaxation on the left hand or the fretting hand. And when you start playing acoustic guitar, it's very tempting to feel that you have to fight the instrument because the action's higher, the strings are thicker, so you start putting all this extra pressure on that fretting hand that you don't need. And ultimately it slows you down or it causes you tension. So one thing I like to do to counteract this is to play things that require hardly any pressure at all, and those come in the form of harmonics. One of my favorite exercises to play is just an E minor pentatonic scale, but played entirely in harmonics like this. I'm going to play that slowly and close up now so you can see how it looks. And remember, the aim here is light touch on the fretting hand. The second tip is to get comfortable using open strings because they feature a great deal in acoustic guitar styles, from the singer-songwriter to the solo instrumentalist. We love using open strings and the sound of them. A good way to do this is to take a scale that you're already comfortable with and then substitute as many of the fretted notes as you can for open strings. So for example, if I play a fretted G major scale, I can look at that scale and see which of those notes can be replaced with open strings. In that case, I can play the G as an open string, the A, the B, can't do the C, obviously. I can do the D, E, and not the F sharp. So now, playing with open strings, I'll get this effect. And this also does wonders for the left hand because you have to work on clarity and accuracy as much as possible. So let me play that one slowly and then in close up so you can see what's going on. The third tip is to get accustomed to viewing the instrument as different components, from the bass notes on strings six, five, and four, through the melody on strings three, two, and one, or even chords played on strings four and three. And this has been in existence as long as fingerstyle guitar. A very common way of starting off with this is to see the bass notes on strings six and string four as representing the beat. So you'll get this kind of effect. where we're just thinking of a bass line counted one, two, three, four for each of those notes. And against that, we can then start playing melody notes or simple patterns. For example, this kind of thing. All I'm playing there is a four note melody. But I'm playing it on the beat in tandem with the bass notes. From there, I can start thinking about syncopation, i.e. playing those melody notes off the beat, which will give me this effect. So in that case, I'm thinking one and two and three and four and. A 
Again, let's look at that close up. The fourth tip is to not fear altered tunings, because as soon as you start playing acoustic guitar, you're going to encounter them sooner or later anyway. Different players take a different approach to altered tunings. Some like to have a very good knowledge of them, so they'll treat it almost like an alternate standard tuning, and they'll work out all their chord and scale shapes, so they know them in every single key. Some players like a good working knowledge of that tuning, so they'll work out the basic scales and the basic chords, and then other players simply use them for playing repertoire in, so they're not worried about where the notes are or where the chords are. Any of those approaches are fine, depending on your own personal requirements. For me, I like to have a good working knowledge of a tuning because I find I can arrange and compose in it more quickly if, if I do. And the way I'll approach it generally is like we looked in, in tip two. I'll take scale shapes, but I'll start thinking about how to play them in open strings. So I'm in dadgad tuning here. One of the more common ones. So for example, I'll take a D major scale, but I'll play with open strings. And then I'll think about where the other notes are relative to that, so I can work on things like minor scales. So let's look at those two slowly in close-up and then have a go at figuring out some of the other scales in different keys in dadgad tuning using that open string approach. And the final tip is to learn any new finger picking pattern you hear. Because although we start off approaching things from the same place, you'll find that many players either have an idiosyncratic way of picking the strings, or they just have patterns that you're not used to. So the more time you spend on learning other people's patterns, the quicker you will find it to pick up other people's playing. Thanks for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can reach me at stuart at stuartrhymemusic.com. I'll see you next time.